The Inchbody catchment contains a number of dairy farms and water runoff from the catchment feeds into Lake Brunner on the South Island's west coast. The lake is very sensitive to increases in soluble phosphorus. Dairy NZ and scientists at Ag Research have been working on this problem. They have established that phosphorus loss can be reduced by about 20% from a typical dairy farm within the catchment using a variety of strategies. The west coast is predominantly a long, thin region, not a huge area of plain land separating the coast from the southern Alps. Most of our streams are pretty quick flowing, especially in high rainfall events. The Lake Brunner is a special area because we've got catchment, a lot of small streams, spring flowing creeks as well, and high rainfall, all draining into the lake. Um, we've got about a, over a one year retention time in the lake. So we're looking at a, a large amount of nutrients and things like that coming into an area, collecting over time and then discharging out. So it's the collection in the lake that we're worried about of these nutrients staying here for a while. The lake's been monitored for the last 20 years, since the 1990s, and we've seen a decline in water quality. We're looking at a few things, total phosphorus, nitrogen, clarity, and chlorophyll A. With the decline, there's a worry that if it keeps on going, we could have problems with algal blooms and things like that in the lake. So with our new plan, we've brought in a um, new set of rules which have been backed up with the research that's been carrying on in the area to try and limit phosphorus, which is the limiting factor in the lake, for algae production and that sort of thing, um, coming in to the lake and through the tribs and everything else, um, limiting that so we can hopefully get back to our goal at Council's 2004 levels, um, or better. Ag research has actually done quite a bit of work in the coast, looking at practical ways that farmers could perhaps reduce the amount of nutrients being lost from their farms. We've approached the research projects to identify mitigation strategies that will best suit those high rainfall areas, but what we might think of as the best might not fit into the farm system, so we've really tried to look at three things when we've um, identified mitigation strategies to reduce that nutrient loss. And those would be how they fit into the farm system, how effective within that farm system are they for lowering that phosphorus and nutrient loss, and how cost effective they are as well. What we did for the first project was look at the farm system and we chose five farms in the catchment and we used overseer nutrient budget model to identify on those five farms hotspots for nutrient loss. Then we tried to address the best way to lower the nutrients from those hotspots. We presented farmers with three options of what we thought would be effective and cost effective in mitigating that loss from those hotspots. We looked at uh, fencing streams, we looked at lowering uh, the Olsen P levels in the soil, and we looked at switching from a highly soluble phosphorus fertiliser to a low solubility um, uh, phosphorus fertiliser such as um, phosphate rock, and uh, that's less mobile than rainfall. And we looked at better management of effluent, and it really uh, depended on the farm sift system which was the best. Uh, we found that uh, the herd home, for instance, was good on some farms, but if farmers were installing a herd home without good effluent management, the benefit gained would be lost in the subsequent ap application of the effluent. There was two mitigation strategies that really uh, stood out across the board as being very good and one of those was lowering the Olsen P level that's being maintained in the soil uh, without affecting the yield and that generally comes at a cost benefit to the farmer and the second one was switching to a, a low solubility P fertiliser such as phosphate rock and that tended to not have uh, a, a cost uh, increase associated with that but the two of those mitigation strategies by themselves or together were extremely effective in reducing the amount of phosphorus being lost to the lake system. 
we're going away from any discharge to water in Brunner. We're yeah. pushing for a low rate to storage. Yeah. So when you receive an application for a consent, um, can, is the review process for that different now? Um, Often you find on West Coast farms they have two pond systems where they are treatment pond systems that then discharge to surface water. Best practice um, these days is now to get as much of that effluent out onto the paddocks as possible for not only economic benefits but also for uh, waste stream benefits as well. West Coast farms all up and down the coast face many challenges, particularly because of the rainfall and each area has its own different uniqueness. That issue, coupled with different soil types up and down the coast, make that a bit of a concern in terms of getting the effluent out onto the paddock such that it is kept in the root zone. The company has rolled out a code of practice for all its suppliers to adhere to with respect to environmental concerns, animal welfare and on-farm aesthetics. A lot of what this research has helped us do is provide farmers with scientific backup with respect to best practice of getting effluent out onto um, pasture. On this farm we've got hump and hollows in the land here so we're obviously getting an area which is periodically flooded and AgriSearch has set up an irrigation trial here in conjunction with Dairy NZ looking at the effects of applying effluent to land and whether that could be done effectively without losing nutrients. The problem with applying effluent to land on the coast is that you really need a deficit, a moisture deficit in the soil to allow that effluent that you're applying to be contained within the root zone of the, of the um, plant. Uh, but in the west coast, because it rains quite often, then there's very rarely the deficit needed to uh, get rid of the volume of effluent that's generated. We've developed guidelines that will allow west coast farmers to apply effluent to land. However, we still see three critical factors important to those guidelines. And they are that effluent really does need to be applied at a low rate to stop uh, effluent being driven across the surface of the soil and into the humps and into the hollows where it will have a direct contact to the stream. Uh, we see low depth as being a, a key factor in all of this and uh, so we're not pushing effluent down through the water table and out into groundwater and we see applying effluent uh, when there isn't a soil water deficit but when it's not raining. So we're still trying to avoid those heavy rain periods uh, uh, for applying effluent. This program was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.